Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Hi guys, welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I'm excited, as you know, to be here as always. Today is a fun one. We are just going to be me and you. It is another solo cast. Uh, and this is another situation where it kept coming up in life and in specific situations. So I'm like, we got to talk about it. This is a turmeric and tequila conversation. Um, this one's called life is a game of reps, semicolon personal responsibility this year. I mean, 2020 was crazy in 2021. I think everybody is reevaluating, reevaluating what they want in life, how they want to approach things, um, and really dialing into what they need to know instead of relying on the government or coaches or, you know, these restrictions or alkalades. Um, I think people are really starting to take control for themselves. So this was a great reminder for me to pull back and dial in, like I said, this was coming up in a multitude of situations um, where, you know, you do the work and you do, you try and do a lot of things, right. Or maybe you haven't and you're not getting rewarded. Maybe you don't get the job. Maybe you're underpaid. Maybe you don't qualify for whatever competition and you did do the work or you're in a reflection point of, did I actually do this work? Do I actually deserve these things? And I'm just, you know, I'm out of expectation. Uh, so we're going to break it down. And I, this has been a conversation with myself many times in life, because uh, as a lacrosse player, as a competitive CrossFit, a CrossFit athlete, I was never really a stats player. And people can argue this both ways, meaning, you know, it, the stats don't lie, the numbers don't lie, they don't. And there's such things that are not measurable, like heart and hustle and leadership and all the things that are, you know, key pieces to the recipe, but there's no gold stars for those. And when you look at somebody that's got a million, you know, goals or whatever, but they're a total a-hole, well, guess what? You don't, there's no score sheet or stat for your a-hole and you're a distraction to the team. So you really have to pull back and be comfortable with who you are, where you're coming in and understand the work that you did regardless of the result. And that's really what we're going to break down today. Uh, because it is 2021 and we are doing like goals and and trying to dial in just to get this 2021 right uh, coming off 2020 and damn that bar is low. So we should take some comfort in that and knowing that whatever effort we put forward, hopefully that's our 100%, even on some days when that 100% is only 80%, that's what I got to give. That's okay. But at least you're showing up and giving what you got. Uh, I, I oftentimes think we do get tied up in this grand gesture measurables, you know, it's, it's the, the Super Bowl or working at Apple or what have you. And really it's about those reps in that journey in between. It's all the little things that you did to get to that goal, regardless of you got it to exactly where you wanted to be, um, that really matter. Sometimes things work out, not the way you planned. It wasn't the goal you wanted, but in actuality, they did work out. It just took a little bit longer for you to see the light, regardless if you're religious or you believe in universe or energy, as you know, I say, God, universe, Madonna, things do work out for a reason. And you still have to show up and give your hundred percent to receive those, uh, gifts, goals, enlightenment, the job, whatever. Um, I want to start off, uh, just kind of getting into reverse engineering. You know, if we do have that mindset of goals, it can be to win to the to win the CrossFit Games, to be married with kids, to work at a certain place, whatever the goal is, fine. But I want to break down and really get into the minutia, if you will, of this reps. And I, I wrote down how do we get to these? How do we get to that end game, that goal? Um, and, and reverse engineer it. So really starting at that step one saying, you know, what can I do to get to this in game? And that is, it's, it's the reps, it's the self accountability, it's the personal responsibility, all these non measurables, making sure that you're checking in on the daily and saying, okay, you know, did I show up to that workout and uh, sort of do some of those reps and maybe not and you know, post a certain score, maybe when it wasn't completely accurate, but I was kind of tied up in what the score was? Or did I do the, the actual workout. I got a crappy time, but that's really what it was. Like I, I really did all the reps that were required regardless of the time. And I think that conversation, those points, and again, it can be fitness. It can be, did you go to work? Did you, you know, sleep at your desk all day? Or did you show up hundred percent in the meeting? Did you prep for the meeting? Did you do all those reps in order to be prepared for whatever the task was at hand? And that self-accountability at night, I think is the key piece when you sit down and you're like, 
did I actually have that many reps? Did I mess up the counting? Did I intentionally not do it because I wanted a, a self score? No one's really able to check any of this. It all falls back down to you and that self accountability, that personal responsibility and looking at how we're doing all of these little things, keeping that end game in mind. Um, I think some of that, that reflection point, those key takeaways uh, on how, having to really dial in and get to your best self are, I wrote down real training days, meaning like you show up and you're really there to work. Some days you're tired and it, it you know, it is what it is like a work day when you're just tapped out, maybe from the kids or the dogs or a different workout or whatever. Some days you're hundred percent is your 60% and that's okay. But I say real training days and you really show up to do the hundred percent and only only you know that nobody really, even if you get the best score, the most reps, whatever, maybe your hundred percent was the fastest time. Maybe your hundred percent was the slowest time, but you, it was a you know personal record or best lift for you or whatever. Um, I wrote down extra work, putting in where you can, like, you know, doing the extra reading, doing the self, uh, visualization, meditation, really getting your mind right. And those, I asterisks, a visualization, meditation, writing, writing down your goals, writing down your hopes and dreams, doing a vision board, some sort of visual where you can really see what it is. I think having those keep you ac accountable in that, in, you know, when you're in that rep mindset, um, it can get monotonous when you're not seeing rewards or gold stars or some sort of alkylate or affirmation that you are on the path to where you want to go. You need that visualization or that that thing that you can see, the physical thing that you can see, the writing or the book or the vision board that, you know, then kind of check in and be like, okay, wait, let's check in. Maybe some things are happening. Maybe this is working. Maybe, you know, I actually did, you know, PR my time by two minutes and, you know, that wasn't the fast of the time. But now if I look back at my old records, this is a huge step. So those little markers, I think are huge. I'm always a big believer in exercise, whether you're a competitive athlete or not, go walk around the block, don't go do whatever, get your mind flowing, get your, your baseline, like your relaxed mode, right. And then a lot more is clear. I think you will see how these little reps are adding up and you can enjoy the journey a little bit more and not get so wrapped up in the in game, the grand gesture, the goals. Affirmations are something I've been really intentional about for 2020, um, 2021, yowza. Uh, meaning, you know, I am the best podcaster I want to be. I'm going to be buying a house in Evergreen, Colorado, which is something I want. You know, I'm in, you know, I am the smartest person I know or whatever your uh, affirmations are, but sitting there and truly running in that in your mind and believing it. And these are all just little reps, again, that lead us to that in game, but really just living a better way. Um, I, an example of this that I, I wrote down, I was, I think I've talked about this before, but I was a Colorado kid in 1999 playing lacrosse and I wanted to go top 20 D1. And back in the day, Colorado was not competitive lacrosse. Like it was out East and all the top 20 teams were of course out East. So it was awesome that my, <laughs> I was naive enough to think like, I don't care, whatever, just get me out there. And I know I can learn, which was great. I actually tap into that mindset today when I can, um, or currently because I think it's, there is a gift in not knowing and, and just believing. Uh, there is a time and place for that though. Sometimes you need to have a little more prep, but point being, I went out there and as soon as I got there, I mean, I knew I was going to get checked really fast, but I earned my way on the team. And by the second year I was a scholarship athlete. Uh, but my key piece of that was I took every opportunity to get ahead and you know, you, you're 18, 19 years old. You don't really know, or at least I didn't, um, how to be a better person or have all this like ideology and theology to like truly dial in as an athlete. And I just was like, give me all the game tape. I'd literally sit in my coach's office and watch VHS tapes, 1999 y'all, uh, of, old, old women's lacrosse games of the season prior. And I, and I didn't really, somebody didn't really even fully understand what I was watching. I like, I knew women's lacrosse, but it was at such a higher pace than what I was used to, but the reps of just watching it. And I'm a very visual le learner really helped me step up my game, understand defenses and offenses and, and shots and, um, you know, specific plays and, and dodges and, uh, and just a mentality, like seeing true competitors compete. I encourage everyone to watch, you know, the last dance of Michael Jordan, or whether you're a basketball fan or an athlete or not. I think all of these examples of athletes dying, dialing in, and you can see this competitive mode, or maybe it's gaming or, um, you know, Bill Gates or whoever your idol is, watch them. If there's material available of them in their game mode, and you can see a different version of themselves. It's, 
it's, it's a competitive space. And I often tap into my competitive zone, uh, during business. Like I'm very, very laid back, but the second it's business time and we're, we're working a big deal or you're coming at me or, you know, positive, negative, whatever, it's a different mode. It's like, you know, when I have to execute a CrossFit workout and I have 30 seconds to execute 10 reps and I'm smoked, but guess what? We're going to tap into that and get it done. And that's, it a skill set in itself. Um, but that started early when I was watching that game tape and I could recognize this competitive stature of, of these high-end athletes and how the good ones are good, but how the good ones had moments of greatness and being able to take that and kind of apply that to my, my own life. And I think that really helped me elevate in addition to the physical work and the training and studying and everything else that really helped me elevate in a faster time to get ahead and really catch up where the other freshmen were at. I think they were miles ahead of me in just knowing the game, playing the game, many things. Um, but there were way, ways around. It. I just had to pack in those extra reps and, and do the extra work and, and catch up just to be equal to where they already were. Uh, but that skill set, that gold that I was learning as a young human is is, you know, carried over to today. And I think that just pays in dividends when it, when you're approaching any challenge in life, uh, personal or professional. I talk about CrossFit a lot. This is certainly not a CrossFit ca cast. Uh, but if anyone knows, CrossFit is basically a series of movements for time, incorporates weightlifting, aerobic activity, and some gymnastics, uh, <laughs> not my favorite, and, you know, a multitude of things. And, you know, a lot of people get really wrapped up in the time. And I get it. As a competitor, it's very easy to do. However, if you are missing reps, you're shorting reps, you have to keep in mind, particularly if you are a competitor, and this, it, my old gym, I used to train, I really appreciated that there were so many of us that did compete, that if you were going to, you know, short in stuff or cheat reps or whatever, it would show. Like, you, when you got on that competition floor, it would show who you are, how you compete, and that you're ill-prepared. When you're not competing and you're just, an, you know, an everyday CrossFitter, it's fine. You show up, you know, you're a paying customer. The point is really to have fun. But if you're really working there to improve, and I do think that anyone that's out there that's going to a fitness class, what have you, maybe it's to look better in jeans or lose weight or blah, blah, blah. It's really about becoming a better version of yourself. So if you're shorting yourself in these reps or these movements, you are ill prepared for the next competition of your life. So it might not be a CrossFit competition. It might not be a work, you know, scenario, but maybe, you know, your daughter runs out the door and you're, you didn't run fast enough to catch her and, and, you know, uh, here comes a dog or something, or I don't know. I mean, there's real life situations that you have to stay prepared for and stay dialed in because you don't know when life's next competition is going to come up. So if you're again, just casual and, and shorting yourself in the gym or at work, what have you, those little things, just like the positive hard work adds up. So does the negative and the shorted out work. Like you are that far behind. Uh, I had one of my favorite CrossFit friends uh, or friends in life uh, we were training yesterday and she had just like an all-star performance. Shout out Alma. Um, she chose to do the heavy weight. She chose to finish the workout. <clears throat> Some people, if it's too heavy, <clears throat> excuse me, they'll just, uh, lower the weight or they'll be done. And it, it, they were cleans. And so she was having a hard time getting up. So she did squat cleans, which anyone that knows CrossFit, that's way more work than a power clean and finished the workout doing the heavy weight, doing the most work, um, and had the slowest time, but the time didn't matter because the point was she did the most work that day in that workout. She did more work than anyone else in that class. And that, you know, it gave her the worst time, but who cares? You know, if you're looking at the board, it's like, oh, Alma had the most, the worst time or whatever. However, she did the most work. So she is more prepared than at myself and every other person in that class for the next day, for the next training, the next thing. So again, you just, you have to pull back and not get wrapped up in, oh, I'm the last on the board. No, no, no. You are first on the board of who's the most prepared. Well, that board doesn't exist, but you have to sit down at night and say, okay, what did I actually do today? Like, I'm really proud of myself for taking the time and, and finishing this workout when everyone else is watching. And and, and doing it the hard way. And, you know, knowing that there's no gold star for this extra work. However, I know that I did this. And now not only am I more physically strong for the next situation, I'm mentally prepared even more because I know that I can now do this. And when the going gets tough, I, I'm going to be able to pick up this weight and I'm going to be able to do it. And that I think are, that's the, those are the gains in life. And that can be in work or what have you. Maybe you step up for a speech when you're not called on and, you know, you, you take a shot and you, you, you share an idea. Um, 
but you take advantage, you recognize those opportunities to be great and take the hard road, take the hard work, even though you know there is no gold star in this, there is no alkaline. And in fact, it's going to make you look like your time's slower, or maybe the boss is going to think you're dumb because you, you know, jumped up, or maybe you're an egomaniac because you're the one speaking. Who knows? There's some sort of risk to it, but that's not the truth. That's just one angle that's scored or written down. The truth is you put it out there, you did more work, and you are now more prepared for the next day. Uh, okay, we're going back to the notes. Um, I said co constant self-awareness and accountability. Keep the long game in mind. It's great in you know business to close the meeting or close the deal, uh, but it's not great if you're doing it at the cost of maybe the integrity of the product. Maybe you sourced it cheaper, but now it's you're using child labor, uh, or you're cutting ingredients. You use cheaper ingredients now. It's you know not gluten free, and you're saying that it is. Uh, I've actually seen all these in my consumer package good work in the marketing and branding world. When you're cutting corners on things, like so you're cutting corners in the gym it will impact your long game, even if you think you're getting away with it. And people will be like, I don't care. Money's money. I'm, this is how I do it. I don't care about CrossFit. I'm just here to have fun. Okay. You know, you don't have to convince everybody to be, have character and integrity. Let it fly. Just make sure uh, you're keeping certain humans uh, around you accordingly. Um, uh, we talked about uh, misreps. You are ill prepared for life. It only impacts you. You know, CrossFit is there's major conversation around, uh, you know, videos. Like if you're video in your workout and people are kind of cutting reps, or if you're taking drugs. Uh, the thing is, the truth is, all of these things. Cheating is rampant in competitive anything. That is the nature of the beast, and that's fine. And my personal stance is, I love cheaters. Go ahead and cheat. Cheat all you want. Yes, you you know, maybe it costs me my spot at the games, or maybe it costs me this. But I'm not the victim here. You are of yourself. You, you might be winning this battle, but I'm here to win the war. I, I need to be the best prepared person for whatever is next for me. And I may not even know that what that is. God, universe, Madonna, what have you. I'm just getting ready and staying ready. So when opportunity does call, I will know I have done the work. And there is nothing like that feeling of knowing that it's your chance, it's your shot, it's your called on, and you're not ready. I've experienced that. And I know if you can really pull back and think about that moment when you get called to the board or you get called to represent for a team or whatever you got, you get called to the stage and you and your heart know you are ill-prepared. There's no feeling like that. And if you've ever felt it, you will be motivated to do every single rep every day. And damn, is that a lesson? Uh, it's not worth it. You never want to feel that. And honestly, at some point, I, I hope you do, because that will all keep you dialed in. It certainly worked for me of knowing to just shut up and do the work. Don't get lost in too many of the details. Yes, details matter. But at the end of the day, you know, if you did or didn't do the work. Um, there's the saying, and I know people throw this around a lot. How you do something is how you do everything. I do believe in that. And, you know, you can't do everything at hundred percent and that can get into like, you know, time management and opportunity cost and, uh, cutting out boundaries, cutting out things that don't matter. So you can put more time into certain things, but like my nutrition is pretty good, but I'm not someone that measures my food or whatever. Uh, do I miss a rep in CrossFit? No. Is my uh, mobility that great? Nope. And I have a list of excuses, three knee surgeries, ACL and uh, ge genetics. And I can tell you all these great things that you should give me a pass that they don't. Um, but, you know, some of my depth on my overhead squats or whatever, it's it's not perfect. But do I miss reps? No, I genuinely don't. Mostly because I know when I go home at night and I, I have that thought of knowing that I did less work, it will keep me up. I don't care if anyone knows that or anything like that. Like we're past that phase. It's just, I know that if I didn't do it, I'm going to pay for that at some point. There is no shortcut in this world. And it's even if you get away with it. Now you get the star, you get the paycheck, you get the bonus. At some point you will answer for that shortcut you took. And usually you don't want to know how that shows up and it's not going to be ideal. And it's, it's not worth it. Whatever, however it shows up, it's not worth it. Just do, do, do the work from the get go. And I'm certainly not here preaching or convincing. This is merely to shed light. I certainly had to go through my own journey on these things and understand this cost benefit analysis and opportunity cost and understand, you know what? I'm not going to warm up. I'm just going to lift the weight. Oh, my back is sore now. And now I can't lift at all. So it's these little things where it's like, no, fool, go do the full warm up which I still, I'm not great with that either, but you know, we're getting there. Uh, and then, you know, your, your body is good for longer, you know, as we get older, that makes more sense. So some of this stuff you just have to lean into, but I do, I do think it's a good rule of thumb to keep in your mind, how you do something is how you do everything, approach everything with that deep integrity to do your best. Um, I said, you don't know when your preparation will be needed. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. I don't know who says that, but it's glorious when you're ready at all times. And again, you're prepared. If you've done all these reps in between this entire time, you can almost 
relax in a space where it's like, I'm ready whenever I don't need to like hustle to get something to go in or work harder in this last hour to execute this project. I procrastinated on the last minute. Like I'm ready. Call. I'm, I'll be, I'm right here. Call me when you're ready. Uh, last night. And again, this has been coming from my world. I, I always know when something shows up, like in the gym, in my life and personal life and a movie I'm watching and a book I'm reading. Sure enough, I was watching Ford versus Ferrari last night. Um, I thought it was pretty good. To be honest, I <laughs> I didn't love it. I know it got a bunch of awards or nominated or whatever. I'm not big on that either. But the production was great. The acting I thought was pretty good. And I, I'm also not a movie reviewer. So just take that as a grain of salt. But I did love some of the heavy metaphors around life and training and uh, knowing that life's not fair. And this is an underdog story. Usually the underdog wins. This guy doesn't. And unfortunately, if you don't know the story in a nutshell, it's about uh, the Ford company and Ferrari, the car, the two car companies, uh, setting up to prepare two cars to race in this big race. I can't even remember what it was. I'm so not a race car person. Uh, but long story short, they fund, they find the drivers and they need, you know, the best of the best, the best drivers, what have you. So Ford internally, they didn't like this driver, but the guy they hired to put it together, Matt Damon, loved the driver. He had a gift, but there's some personal ego, which I also see in uh, sports, business, and fitness all the time that were kind of, you know, potentially keeping them from the top. The guy at Ford races, uh, this is a giveaway if anyone uh, has not seen it yet. And they ask him to pull back. So all three Ford cars, when he's about to win, win this big race, so all three of them cross the line. And the guy that didn't like him within Ford essentially set him up. So he didn't win. One of the other Ford guys won. They all three finished. Um, but point being, he he didn't win and you thought he was going to win. The company screwed him. I don't know if Ford approved this movie, but it really made me not ever want to buy a Ford. Not that that's necessarily my sort of brand anyways, no disrespect. Um, but I don't know if it's just like my personality. Anywho, uh, it the com I don't know. Like if it was my company, I'd be like, I don't know that I'm going to position my company in this light. Ferrari was a little more egotistical, but the cars were still beautiful and they had minimal dial. It seemed a little more pure to me. Like that naturally drew me more to the brand, which I'm also not passing up a Ferrari. So you can go ahead and judge me in all these statements. I'm open for that. Uh, but I just, from a branding perspective, I thought that was interesting that either company would open up <laughs> this story to tell their story. And supposedly it's built on a true story. Anyways, we're getting back to point here. Um, the guy doesn't win. He did all the work. He basically risked his life multiple times. And he turns to Matt Damon, the guy that put him together, that talked him into being the driver. And he goes, you promised me a ride, not a win. And I was like, oh, yes, cliches in the movie. This is it. But that it's the truth. It was all about the ride and the journey. And you didn't get the win, but you had, he had two record laps that were the fastest prior to that last one that recorded the win with all three of them. Uh, this might make more sense you when you watch it, or I could be completely botching it. But the point is he didn't win. He had already won, except he pulled back at the very end of the start at uh, the finish line and didn't technically win, but everybody knew he was the best driver, the most gifted and a true one of a kind. Um, and it was just that good reminder of like, damn, you wanted him to win so bad. And you're like, ah, that guy's an asshole. And this is stupid as is life. Life's not fair. You're not always going to get the promotion. You know, some guy, girl, whatever might get it before you. You might be overlooked. You might have the best podcast in the world. Hashtag TNT. We're working on it. And, you know, you're overlooked a million times for things or what or whatever. Or and it's not victim mentality. It's just knowing that life's not fair. Again, keep doing the work. And at some point your payoff or your accolade will come mostly just enjoy this journey and know that you are doing as much as you can. And this is your best. And that in itself is enough. Um, so I thought that was really great that that, that came up. And I think when you're looking for these things and you see it, there's a very human element to working hard and doing your best and not being rewarded for it. But knowing that that's a lot of people, there are a lot of heroes, meaning truly great humans that are trying to work, make this world a better place that we don't know. We'll never know. Um, there's been a lot this in 2020 about first responders and some of the scenarios that they're in blow my mind. It, again, in my fitness situations, a lot of people are doctors, police officers, um, medical something. And it's, it blows my mind the the daily things that they do. And there's no additional credit. You know, we fangirl over Madonna or Brad Pitt or what have you. And not to discredit their choices in life. Um, I'm not saving people's lives on the daily. At least I don't think so. But, and I know what I'm doing particularly right here is important. This is my way to be of service, but there's m many of these efforts are thankless and there is no acknowledgement. There's no gold star. So to pull back and really see that human side that 
mm, guess what? This is most varsity humans. This is happening all the time. You can breathe and just know that you did the best. And guess what? You don't have a gold star, star just like they don't. Um, so I think there's this very uh, human through line, if that makes sense, through all of this, just knowing that what you're doing and if you're putting out being as useful as you can, that's enough. Um, back to notes. We will conclude shortly. Uh, the gold stairs, uh, you know, life is not fair. Uh, one more sports example. I've talked about this before as well, just in case that Ford versus Ferrari, uh, little scenario did not hit home. Um, this is one of the big ones for me personally. I, Oh gosh, CrossFit, I competed. I think I've, I've been in it now for like 10, 11 years. So it's been a long time when it was just starting out, worked on the business side of three block, been on the competing side. So I've kind of seen all angles of it. It's been really cool to see it grow. It attracts a ton of varsity humans. There's of course a bunch of, you know, negative naysay around CrossFit and what have you. And that's fine. Unpack that yourself, however you feel it, but it's been very positive in my life. That being said, some of the journey, uh, has not been positive. It's, I've been able, it's been phenomenal life lessons, but in one instance in particular, I was probably at the height or close to of my competitive uh, athletic space. And I was in some of the best shape of my life. Went to regionals, decided to go on a, a team after, you know, trying to compete as an individual for many years. I was like one person qualifying outside of going to the games and, you know, weird things happened. Like my jump rope broke twice and again, no excuses. These are just like actual happenings. It was bizarre. And, uh, this year I chose to go as a team. Um, a couple other people did, they don't normally individual athletes and there was muscle ups called in this regional event. So we're at regionals and they needed to have two girls, um, get two muscle ups for the team to move on and muscle ups are usually a disqualifier. So as CrossFit has progressed, that's become like a standard movement. And everyone does it. And if this doesn't make sense, that's okay. As far as CrossFit, you'll get the moral of the story. Uh, I was not a great gymnastics person. I deadlift, I can dig a hole. I can haul things like that's what I'm built for. Not here to flutter in the rings and up the bar and up the rope. And no, we get it that we can do it, but that's just not my vibe. I made it my vibe during training. So I could do things. Um, but there are, girls that were much more equipped in this space than me. And I had already done a workout that day. So I was additionally tapped. Long story short, go to get up there. Our first girl goes, does her two. I go, I get one and I couldn't get the second one. And I kept trying. And anyone that knows um, muscle ups or like push ups or tries anything that's like a real small muscle group, once it's done, it's done. And for some reason, we had practiced this a ton. The rings were a little shorter. So, like one of our taller girls that's actually good at muscle ups didn't want to do it and or didn't think it was whatever that choice was there. Um, and I couldn't get it. And, and we were, you had to get it within two minutes before the workout ended. And I stood just looking up at the rings. And if anyone that's been in a scenario where you know you have to do something and it's like, I don't know if I can do this. Like I I genuinely are asking me to like run a mile in five minutes. Like I don't, I can't do that. <laughs> that's, that's how I was feeling. And the clock was ticking and I have five people standing behind me knowing that if I don't get this, we are all not going to the games. And we are sitting like second at regional. So that would have wiped the entire team out. Um, somehow some way I actually have a picture of it I, I i squeezed out a second muscle up and it was like within i think there was 10 seconds left in the clock like i don't really know how but as i reflect on that moment of the my mental composure you know i can't remember how old i was but it had to have been i don't know like 10 years ago uh knowing that there's humans riding on you it's one thing if you fail yourself but when you fail other people whew, that's it's a scenario. So long story short, I, what I would consider one of my, probably my finest athletic moments of being able to pull it together, fi figure it out, you know, with nothing left, pull through, get it done, get through a movement. I'm not good at when I'm smoked and there's, you know, five people waiting on me to, to get to their next space to get it done. Fast forward, we get second in regionals and I'm taken off the team because they were worried that I would not be able to do muscle ups at the CrossFit games. Meanwhile, um, I was one of the top, top female athletes in the gym. I'd been to the games, I think four other times and notoriously the games don't have at that point had, um, like really gymnastics movements. It was a lot of like heavy move again, things I'm good at. And, uh, I was taken off the team and I, I watched the team compete from the stands and, uh, no opinion here. It was quite literally our worst year performing ever. And we had an injury and the vibe was just whatever. And I'm not attributing any of this to me being there, not being there in the team or anything like that. I do genuinely believe it was the downfall of that first step of the downfall of that entire scenario. But the point really isn't about being on the team and being taken off the team or what have you. It's 
even though my end game was to get to the games, what I learned in that moment and how proud of myself I was that no matter what, I kept my mental game together to execute the task at hand when I had nothing, like I genuinely had nothing, but I, in my mind, I knew I had to execute. There was no gray area. And somehow I did, uh, insert all that mental training, which I wasn't privy to yet. I wish I was, even though the outcome showed like, Oh, you're actually taking off the team. It looks like a loss. I gained so much in that experience in knowing that I truly quote unquote failed, um, but really succeeded. And I, I could really see the situation for what it was. And, and it, that took a couple years. Um, it, and, and recognize that that moment of greatness, even though my measure of greatness was getting to the games and, you know, placing, you know, top five or what have you, which we had done, uh, I think two years prior, we had gotten second at the games. So we had, you know, tasted the glory and were hungry for it. But the greatness was within that 30 seconds when I executed the second muscle up. So I really encourage everyone to pull back and it, it, look at those tough spots in life and, and think like, man, that seemed like such a fail, but really that dialed it in. And I think all those reps of training when I was so tired and so not in the mood or just keeping my head to gain, together, uh, knowing the ref was going to call me out or I was going to get no rep by the CrossFit judge or what have you, but keeping that mentality together, that training allowed me to keep my mentality together when I was doing this muscle ups in these final minutes, this whole time I'm worried about, am I going to, I'm training muscle ups. I'm doing this. Blah, 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 and all that really mattered in that moment was the mental training and then everything prepared me. So it's, you never know when these, the skill set you're building on the daily, the little reps are going to show up and carry you through. Um, and provide yourself that space and grace and knowing you are doing the best you can. If you are, and check yourself if you're not, recheck in because it will, it'll show up when you need it and when it's your time. That wasn't my time. That wasn't my thing. However, people say, well, I didn't work out. No, it did work out. It worked out exactly how it needed to work out. And the pieces I pulled from it, change the way I approach everything uh, to this day. And it wasn't just that there was a multitude of things in that scenario that I was really able to pull out and dial in. I, you know, I dialed in my training. I, I, I think on the team, I was getting comfortable, if you will, and complacent as we get older, we can do that in our job and our relationships or have you I had to pull back. We got the diet together. We got the training together. Um, I was, I was ready to kill, to be honest, cause I was pissed and if you, I'm a laid back human, but have you ever seen me in competitive mode and you mess with something I care about it? you'll know, you'll recognize a different me. And I hope everybody can access that space when needed uh, because you should protect yourself, know that you're enough and go fight for what you want, regardless of how it ends up. In conclusion, uh, I want to say recognize the power of process in every opportunity, every rep to be better. Enjoy the journey because the end game goal, championship, whatever, that completion only starts a new journey. Be accountable for yourself, not for a payoff accolade or gold star, but for true character to inspire yourself and others around you. Hashtag influencers. Please note that everybody is watching, even when people aren't watching, even if it's a hundred people or, or one person or what have you, people recognize, and they actually know when you're shorting reps, particularly in CrossFit, but they know when you do extra and they know when you no rep yourself, or they know when you're staying, they're leaving and you're still at the gym doing extra, you're staying after work, watching game tape, or you're doing whatever people recognize that. And you will be surprised how, how those little plays not only work towards work for you, but for everybody that witnesses that, and that inspires them to level up. Uh, integrity matters. Make sure you can lay your head down at night, knowing you took that day to better yourself, no matter how small those steps seem, the reps will lead to greatness. Greatness is not a trophy, uh, prize, money, etc. It's a simple knowing that you are as useful in this world as you can be in service to others and yourself. Don't sell yourself short. And that's pretty much it. Be as useful as you can. One of my favorite quotes, and I've said it many times, Benjamin Franklin, I will die. I'd rather it be said he died useful than rich, meaning be useful, be part of the solution. Don't worry about money and silly, you know, prizes, accolades, in games, resume, live to be the best person you can on the daily, check in with yourself, provide yourself space and grace when you're not living, you know, the most, you know, integrous, integrity, integritous way. I don't know if that's a word, but we'll make it now. Um, using your two character when you're, when you're a little bit off, dial back in and give yourself space and grace to do that because we are human and we do need these checkpoints. Um, but make it a life worth living and, and be in service of others. Just be useful. That's all I got for you today. Thank you for listening and, and uh, hopefully enjoying what's going on. 
um, I think I like these solo casts. I don't know. Give me some feedback on, on what you think. And if there's topics out there that you want to cover or you, you want myself and someone else to talk about, or it's something that's relevant, please give us feedback. You can even just shoot me a DM on turmeric on Instagram. Uh, Instagram is turmeric tequila. There's no, and it's just turmeric tequila at turmeric tequila at turmeric tequila. Uh, and let us know thoughts. I'm, I'm totally down. This is, you know, uh, for everyone else. It's, it's very much for me, but it's, it's really for the world and my space to speak to you. So if you ever need to filter any of it, go ahead. I understand we're a work in progress and this is my truth and my experience. And if it can streamline any of your process in life, this is why we're here. Have a great one. Cheers. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.